Welcome back, everyone. Everyone loved our next guest as James Evans Sr. on the classic sitcom Good Times. Let's not forget about Cleo McDowell in the hilarious comedy Coming to America. Take a look at this classic scene with Eddie Murphy from that film. Sir, I was wondering, did you happen to catch the professional football contest on television last night? No, I didn't. Oh, it was most exhilarating. The Giants of New York took on the Packers of Green Bay. And in the end, the Giants triumphed by kicking an oblong ball made of pigskin to a big H. It was a most ripping victory. Son, I'm just going to tell you this one time. Yes, sir. You want to keep working here. Stay off the drugs. Yes, sir. Look at him. He's like, yeah. Okay, well, now he is a children's book author and executive producer for a new animated children's show. Please welcome in our spotlight the legendary John Amos. Thank you for being here, sir. Big Thank love. You. We have been so excited to have you. Thank you. Um, take me back, because I saw, we were all chuckling, but I saw that you were still chuckling even after all these years. What was it like, um, that film, that classic film, uh, working with Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall? I mean, it must have been such a good time. I could not wait to get to work every day because I knew I was going to spend the entire day laughing. And um, to work with Eddie Murphy is a paid vacation. Yes, I, I bet. And at the time, you know, I know I was just talking to Oak about this kind of thing with music. When you hear it, you know it. When you were working on the film, did you say, this is, I think this is going to be a big hit? There was one day when, after we'd finished shooting, I said, this is going to be, I think, the biggest grossing film I've ever been involved in. And sure enough, because myself and the P everybody who was getting makeup done that day, we made a little wager. I think it was something like 10 bucks a piece <laughs> as to who could come closest to the, to the total gross in the film. None of us were within $100 million of what it, whatever the film finally did. Wow. It, it was phenomenal. Oh, my gosh. Well, it is a classic and another classic uh, that I grew up watching. I was born in 69, so child of the 70s. Good times. And... When I was reading about your time during the show and a couple of seasons into it when they killed off your character, talk about what was going on behind the scenes because, of course, back then we didn't have social media. There was a lot going on, and you should be applauded because you didn't really like the way that things were going. Well, the bottom line is that uh, I felt that the show was taking a direction in which I personally did not want to go. I felt that there should have been much more responsibility uh, given to the parents, particularly uh, the character of, that I was portraying. I had no control over how the other actors interpreted their characters, but I, I felt that, uh, I knew that the way the show was structured, James could not get a good paying job because that would have changed the complexion of everything. But he could have had more opportunities within the economic range that they'd allowed him to have. Yeah. But the main thing I did not like was the fact that they were trivializing, trivializing some of the important issues. And yet at the same time, Norman Lear, probably the most courageous producer in television, right. we covered subjects like gang warfare, I mean, children having firearms in the house and uh, teenage pregnancy, STDs. We covered a lot of material 25 years ago that nobody puts right. a bothers to bother with now. Right. It, it was truly groundbreaking. And I know a lot of people might not know that uh, you actually always wanted to be an illustrator, a football player. Uh, tell me more about that. Well, when I was in high school, uh, I had made up my mind early on, and it's in my high school yearbook. It says my aspirations were to become a cartoonist and to go to the New York School for Cartoonists and Illustrators. So as, as fate, would, fate would have it, rather, as time went by, I did ultimately make the full circle back to um, animation. I'm now working with uh, Charles White, who is West, excuse me, Charlie West, who is, I feel, one of the top animation forces in the country right now. And animation is gonna be extremely important in uh, the years to come and for children to express themselves, please. Yeah, no, I was just gonna say, what, what age group are you targeting with the new book, by the way? It's called A World Without Color. A World Without Color, and also the animated series that Charles West is uh, instrumental in developing, uh, Nubbin and Friends. So both of these projects will be making their debuts or making their impact on the public very shortly. Good, well, we can't wait to tune in. And uh, that's Nubbin and Friends, uh, the video right there. And what is the message that you want to get across? I have a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old daughter. With this, is, Are they the target audience? Yeah, well, not just to entertain them, but it, 
let's call it edutainment, yeah. where the children are uh, subliminally receiving an education without all the uh, Good. all the stuff that usually goes with learning. Before they know it, they've learned something and they've enjoyed it as well. So. Absolutely, there's enough junk out there and 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 things that just are you know mindless. So right. let's have them be entertained, but also absorb some, some good messages. And make them think a little bit. Absolutely. And so it's locally produced, and how can people check it out? When can we start checking it out? I think you start checking it out as early as next month. Okay. Charles is standing right there. Yes, next month? Yes? Yes. And, and, he's, and it's going to be, oh, July. Am I getting the saying, confirmation on that? Yeah, he's saying July. July. And um, okay. it's, it's going to be on Google's platform, um, and so we got to make sure that we can just Google it and watch it on, um, what was it, for YouTube Kids? You got it, yeah. YouTube Kids. YouTube Kids. Excellent. It's nice that he's standing right there. I'm telling you. I'm that's telling great. You, that's, that's my my brain standing uh, over there. Listen, I know how it feels. <laughs> well, it has been such a pleasure. Thank you so much oh, for taking the Oh, thank you for the, the opportunity. And I hope here. all your, your viewers will catch hold of the, both of these projects. Absolutely. Uh, Nubbin and Friends and... The, uh, the book as well. We can't wait for you to contribute to uh, this up and coming generation as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much.